Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back. I'm going to start making tutorials again, kind of from, from the beginning, just because I have hundreds of videos, and I kind of want to start for really basic new users of Moho 13 or Anime Studio, if you have any older versions. So, that's what this video is. We're going to go through some drawing tools, and I just want to run through the basic interface really quick, and probably just the tools today. So, when you open up the program, this is what you're greeted with, and don't don't uh, get discouraged by it. It's I know when I open a new program, it's very daunting because there's so many menus and things like that. But we're just going to start by making basic shapes and show show you how to manipulate them. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the draw shape tool. It's this button right here, and um, if you hover over any of the buttons, you'll see the shortcut. So S. I, I start using shortcuts as soon as possible, so if I ever use a shortcut, I'll just say so as I'm going. So once you select that, you'll have this um, kind of sub-menu up at the top showing you the shapes that you can use, and um, there's a thing called auto-fill and auto-stroke, um, which is pretty self-explanatory, but auto-fill just means the color that's inside of a shape and the fill is the outline or the stroke. So if I have um, the square shape selected and draw it, you can see that it's filled with a maroon color because over here on the right, it's selected as maroon for the fill, and then the stroke or the outline is selected as black. And the way that you change the colors inside of any shape that you've created is you hit Q, which is the shortcut, or you come over here and it's select shape tool. So I'll hit Q and then click left click on the shape and you can see it turns checkered. That just means that it's activated and it's ready to be changed. So there's two ways to change the color. You can actually go over to the fill, click on it, then you have a color picker so you can choose the range of colors and change it manually like this. You can actually change the transparency, so how see-through it is or not. So if you're making windows or something like that, you can over or an overlap um, shapes and, and whatnot. <laughs> and hit OK. Or you can change the stroke. Same way, select the color swatch. And then you can see, let me make that stroke bigger. With it selected, I can change the va number value here and make that stroke really thick. So now it's, we'll do 30, just so it's easier to see. So again, click the color swatch, and then if I left click and drag, I can change the color here or change the hue value. Or you can also come down here to the color swatches, and if I click on any of these colors, it's going to change the fill. And if I want to change the stroke, I'll hold shift down and click on the, those colors and change it that way. So that's just a really quick, easy explanation as far as colors go. I'll turn this uh, stroke back to black, holding shift. I'll change the fill to green. And then I'll go back to the first tool, which is the selector, and just click in the canvas so it's deselected. So that's how you uh, make shapes. Let's, let's just check out the other shape um, tools real quick. So you have a square, you have a circle, you have a triangle, and a star an arrow, the spiral thing that I never use, and the grid. The grid is just, once you select it, you'll see that the horizontal and vertical um, attributes are activated, and you can change the number of how many grid spaces there are. Let's do a command A and delete so we can see, oops, let's go click on the canvas and delete everything and just show you really quick. So the grid I have 10 by 10, which just means it'll draw 10 squares across, 10 squares down. Um, so this is good for making bricks or uh, game grids or you know anything like that. Um, also, I forgot to mention, let's do a command A and deselect. The autofill and auto stroke are checked right here. So if you turn any of these off or on, uh, obviously it'll affect what's being drawn. So if I turn off the fill and draw a grid, there's nothing inside any of these shapes. 
the color has been turned off on the inside. Um, and let's do the opposite. Let's turn the fill on and no stroke. So if I do that now, all we have is the green fills and, and uh, no outline or stroke there. And this is really helpful if you don't want to have strokes, then you can do something like we'll hit Q again, which is the shape selector. And I'll hold shift down so you can select multiple um, shapes by holding shift down. So I can click and then I can uh, select the fill and change that. Hit OK. I can also hold shift down and just drag over a bunch of different shapes and it'll start selecting those. And I can change the color like that. But these are really handy things. All these little shortcuts are really going to help you um, get into drawing inside this program. So let's do Command A. Or wait. Selection tool, Command A, and delete. So back to the shapes real quick. So that's what the auto shape or the auto fill and auto stroke are. So if those are both turned on and you have colors, your shapes will just be filled automatically. Now, one thing I have to tell you about, if you've never used a program like this, um, what closed shapes are. Um, meaning, if you're drawing, um, this is the line tool or the add points tool. If you're drawing um, a shape, it's not going to fill automatically. The program needs to know if it's closed or not. So right now, this is kind of like a a preview or a skeleton it's not doesn't have the shape or fill automatically added to it yet but if I close the shape meaning all the sides are connected and there's something there's an actual area to be filled in it'll automatically fill it in like that so if you if your shape isn't um, closed it's not going to fill in and th right now I have auto weld on which just means when I grab one of the endpoints, you'll notice if I hover next to another endpoint, it'll turn green. That means it's just going to connect it together. So if you're using the add points tool um, and auto weld is turned off, and let's say you're clicking and dragging and you're wanting to make a square or something more complex, normally if you just click on it again, if I hover over the shape, you can see it's green. It's kind of hard to see. But auto weld is turned off, so it's not going to connect to that last point. See if I hover over it, it looks like it's closed. Oops, I hit spacebar, which is the time bar, which happens a lot. I'll get to that in a second. It's not filling in, and a lot of people are f frustrated by that because they're moving points around and they don't see why it's not connecting. So just make sure that when you're drawing, um, Let's go to the add points. Make sure auto weld is turned on because that's going to snap um, points together. And I just, I needed to explain the closed shapes tool just because it's, or not tool, but that concept just because sometimes you're, you're drawing a lot of things and you'll get frustrated with that type of thing. So let me do a command A and delete. And Let's go ahead, let's just draw a new square. So we have the select tool, which selects the points. And then transform points is the tool you're, you're going to use the most probably because it's kind of like four tools in one. And the shortcut for that is T on your keyboard. But um, if you have a shape or anything on your canvas, this is how you manipulate some of the things, um, some of your artwork, I should say. So with T selected, if I go anywhere near a point, even if I'm not on it, and left click and pull, it's going to grab the nearest point so you can actually manipulate and move that point. So you don't have to be directly on it. You can be kind of pretty far away, actually, to move those points. So you're transforming points. And then also, this tool has three other manipulation tools within it. So if I click on the um, shape, You'll notice these red boxes, they're bounding boxes around the shape. Those are to move, rotate, and scale. 
So if I click in between the two red boxes, you'll notice that the icon changes to a uh, circle with an arrow in it. That just means that I can left click and rotate. If I grab any of the points on the inner, so inner square or rectangle, I can scale. The corner points will scale it and then the side points will squash and stretch. And also, if I click on the center, I can move it. And then another huge, huge uh, shortcut that I'm going to use over and over again that you'll see is zooming and panning. So I want to zoom out. My mouse wheel is just automatically set to zoom in and out. So if I just scroll with my mouse wheel, I can move in and out. And if I want to pan, meaning that I move the window around, I'll hold the space bar down. The icon will turn, turn into a hand. And if I left click and drag, I can pan. So panning, zooming, panning, zooming. It's really important to kind of get used to doing that because um, you're going to want to get into certain points when you're doing detailed artwork. And um, I would practice this um, as much as you can because it's just really helpful. If you don't have a middle scroll wheel, you can also use the magnifying glass here and left click and drag left and right and that'll zoom. Or you can click on the pan tool and it'll do the same thing. I just prefer using my mouse wheel and spacebar because it makes work much faster. I don't even have to look over here. I can just do it automatically without having to uh, you know, stop my workflow. So that's really important too. And let's go back to, oh, this is a big deal though. When I use the space bar to pan, sometimes I tap it and it moves the timeline, your animation timeline, which is extremely um, irritating because sometimes you don't know you've done it. So I'll tap it and that moves the timeline. So, I'll start wanting to draw something and it does not, my, my shapes are gone and it's just really frustrating and I know new users will experience this a lot. Make sure that you're on frame zero when you're creating any artwork. So if you've accidentally hit the space bar or moved into the timeline, make sure you go back to frame zero. You can left click on it and just pull it back. Just make sure that orange line is on zero and your tools will show back up. Okay, so let's see, we've covered the transform points tool, which is honestly, you'll use 90% of the time. Now the add points tool is something that I showed you a little earlier with drawing um, shapes. Um, but more importantly, it adds points to a shape that's already created. So we've got this rectangle here. If I have the add points tool selected here, it's also the shortcut is A which is easy to remember. If I hover over any of the sides or the stroke, you'll notice there's a red dot. That just means it's going to add a point. So if I left click and drag, it'll add a new point to it. And if I want to um, draw another line that's not, or make a new shape, I can click on a point. I can drag it out here. And again, because it's not closed, there's not going to be anything in the shape. And you'll notice that even though I've connected all of these points, it still doesn't fill because it's not recognizing it as um, a shape yet. So even though these points are connected like this, I didn't create this. This section right here belongs to this shape right here. So we need to tell the program, hey, this we want to fill this too. So the way that you do that is, again, we're going to use that same tool, create shape, or where is it? No. What am I doing? <laughs> I need the, uh, what? yeah, create shape. Sorry, I, I use so many shortcuts, I forget which button, but it's this this button right here, not the select shape, but the create shape. So in order to create a shape, you need to select all of the sides and it has to be closed. 
well, it doesn't have to. If you want to do just the fill or the um, stroke, you can select. Um, well, this is one way. I clicked on that, and because it recognizes, oh, this is a closed shape, or you want it to be, it'll turn checkered red. So then I can just come up here and hit Create Shape and do that way. Or if I hold Shift down, I can select each point at the same or at different times. So select that shape or that point, then this one holding um, Shift down, and when it recognizes that a shape can be closed, it'll turn checkered like that and do it like that. Um, let me undo that. I'll show you why you might want to do that individually. So say you've drawn a bunch of, added a bunch of points. So I'm going to connect a whole bunch of things. Oops. We'll get into curved lines here in a second. So I'm connecting all these points and I want to fill certain things in, but not the others. Um, so I'll hit U, which is select shape. Um, it gives you more control over which shapes you want to make. So if I grab this point and then this top point, it recognizes that triangle so I can create the shape there. Or I don't want it to be, uh, I want it to fill in this whole uh, shape here. So I'm going to select these points holding shift and go around like that. Now that's pretty difficult. Actually, that's kind of, that's not going to work because this, um, this line is there. Let's do this. It's pretty, it's kind of tricky. Create a shape like that. I'm just left clicking and dragging. But the point is to show you that, um, oh, Here's another thing that happens quite a bit. I saw it kind of happen right there. Let me just add another line here so you can see. So let's say I want to fill this shape in right here. I select all these points. Oops. Well, this is a good example, like this. So you can see I have this rectangle selected, but it's not filling in checkered, and that's because I have this extra point selected, and it's saying that it's not a closed shape now. So to deselect, I'm going to hold down Shift and Option, or actually, I think it's just Option, yeah. Option will deselect this point. So Shift will select it, and Option and left clicking and dragging will deselect. And again, when you're able to fill it in, it will uh, become red checkered like that, and then we can create a shape. Um, so let's do Command A and deselect. Let's go ahead and delete everything. Let's draw a shape again. Okay. The next tool really quick is the curve tool. This is really handy for um, making organic curves and things like that. So if I have a square here and I want it to be more rounded, let's just do an example. I'll do a hand. I'm going to hit A, add points, which is the tool we just covered. I'm just going to drag and drop points. I'm going to make some really funky, ugly fingers, adding points to where the knuckles will be. Too. So just clicking and dragging, nothing fancy. And there's a thumb. And then I'll hit T to transform points and move this around. The curve tool, if I click on that and I left click and drag, all it does is add Bezier handles or curves to these points. So it curves them out. So you can actually left click and drag to add them, or you can click on the point and then use the button here. And that smooths it out, adding these handles. And these handles are, uh, you can manipulate them, and um, that just changes the curve. And you can also hold down Option and only affect one curve. So this is good if you're making waves or, you know, you want more con precise control of the curves. 
hit A, oops, let's move this, hit T, and move this. C is the shortcut for curves, easy to remember again, T to transform, C to curve. So if you've, if you've curved something out and you hold option down and you mess up your curve and you don't like that, you can also come back and do straighten or peak. Basically that just takes the curve out of any points that you've had. So we'll turn those back into peaks. But this is 90% of the drawing or artwork that I create in here is used by the, these four or five tools that I've just shown you right now. So just adding curves. So if I hit A, add a point, hit C, curve, hold option. I can uh, change the curve, hit A, add a point, hit T to move the point or transform. And when you see me in other videos, you'll see how fast that I get with using those. So I have my fingers on A, C, and G quite a bit, and T. So T, again, A, add points, C, curve, and so on. So it's really, oh, again, panning and zooming, I tapped my space bar and went into the timeline. So... I have to go back to zero. Again, that's up to you if you want to use those shortcuts or not, but I'm going to go ahead and hit T, select that, and get rid of it. So I'll draw another square. So that is the curve tool. And also, here's a good thing to know. If I hit T and I select this shape, well, here's a, let me add some more points. I'm going to show you like a bush or something. I add all these points and I want to curve all of the points out at the same time. So let's I do this. It doesn't look like a bush now, but if I hit T, select the shape, you'll notice that all the points are selected. So if I hit C now and drag it, it's going to curve every point, which is really nice. Or let's hit T and select the canvas so it deselects. And let's go ahead and hit G for the selection tool. I'm going to hold shift down and I'm just going to grab the points that are on the outside. And I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen when I use the curve points with this. These will stay sharp or at a peak and then the outside ones will curve. So this looks more <laughs> bush-like-ish. So that's a really good thing to know if you want to do a little shortcut for curving things out. Um, and then the next tool, we have got uh, the pencil tool or freehand tool. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I actually, I really don't use this a whole lot. Um, it's just a drawing tool. You'll see that you can connect points but I'm only using a mouse and keyboard now. I don't have a drawing tablet. So it's really hard to make really nice clean artwork um, with the freehand tool. But since it's vector, you can actually, um, let's select everything and delete. Let's say you draw, you know, <laughs> this is supposed to be a head. Um, you draw something, since it's vector, I can hit T and transform points, and then I can go ahead and start moving these points and fine-tuning. So in that sense, it's a really good tool. Um, let me hit the curve points. And then you can start manipulating uh, your artwork that way. So um, it's kind of just what you're used to. I, I like starting with basic shapes and then going outward from that. Um, the freehand tool also has lots of different options. If you have a pen and a tablet, you can change the pen pressure. You can, um, oops, select this, delete it. You can change the taper. Uh, the smoothing is really nice. If I turn the smoothing up, that makes it a little easier to draw. So if I don't have a steady hand, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the uh, curves a little bit easier to draw and a little bit more um, free-flowing. 
If I turn that down and draw, you'll see how the line does not correct itself. It's very um, scribble-like. Even if I'm trying to be precise or smooth, it's, it's kind of ragged. So that's the, there's a lot of different things that you can mess around with that. Um, but I'll get into the freehand drawing later. I just want to go through these tools. Let's draw a basic shape again. The next tool is Delete Edge. This one's pretty obvious what it does. If I delete an edge, it cuts it, and it also breaks the shape apart, so it's no longer a closed shape. So um, This can be really handy, though, if you want to do something like... Um, let's do the grid and I want to delete some of the sides so you know if you wanted to let's say you wanted to make a Tetris uh, piece of artwork I can um, break apart these shapes and then just kind of make them uh, like Tetris pieces and then again create shape holding shift down we can select the um, points that we want and then create a new shape change the color like that and create another shape so there are uses for the delete edge tool um, it's good for cleaning up artwork and doing you know things like this but I don't use it a whole lot because I use the hide edge tool, which is it's much better. It's it's it doesn't break apart the shape. So let's go ahead and draw a new shape. Oops, new square. The magnet tool. I don't use this a whole lot, but I will show you exactly what it does. Um, you use this for I use it for hair or making stuff look a little more organic. The grid's a great example of how to use it, though, or not how to use it, but how it actually affects artwork. So if I use the magnetic tool, wherever I click, the center of the brush is going to have the most influence. So if I click on this corner, it's going to pull really strong anything that's in the center of the brush. But the farther away on the or towards the edge of the brush, it's not going to affect as much. So if I Put the edge of the brush here and left click and drag you can see it doesn't really follow it that well it does a little bit so but the closer i get to the center the stronger the pull is so it's very organic you can see in the grid exactly how it affects um, the artwork it's pretty cool on the grid actually it looks very 3d but that's um what the magnetic tool is for. It's it's just for kind of reshaping and resizing things in a more organic way. Again, I don't use it a whole lot, but it is really, really cool. Deselect, let's draw another shape. And the blob tool. This is just a tool that um, you can add. Well, let me just show you. If I paint with it, it's going to do a fill and a stroke. And if I paint over the area I've already done, it's just going to add to it. So the, again, this is another um, kind of organic brush. And I don't use it a whole lot. Um, but it does, again, like the other tools, has its uses. But it's not very, uh, not something I use a ton. Um, erase tool, self-explanatory. It erases, but... It does not break apart the shape like the delete edge tool. So it tries to maintain the shape. It just adds more points to the sides. So that's pretty That's pretty nice. Um, you can definitely find good uses for this as far as drawing goes. And then point reduction. All this tool does is you want to have the, as few amount of points as possible to lower the file size of your animation. Or it's just easier if you're doing point animation, which we'll get into later. It's just better to have the fewer amount of points. So I don't think it's going to do it on here. 
but just dragging over artwork and getting rid of points actually will well now it did it see it reduced it just takes away some of the points and tries to maintain the shape um, but you can also do this by hitting T for transform points and then selecting and hitting delete and cleaning up your artwork and then using that curve tool to uh, make the shape look right so if I hit C let's just I'm going to select all the points by hitting T and selecting the shape and, uh, the points or peak tool or peak option and this is really how I like to draw is have everything sharp at first get the uh, object the way I want and then curve afterwards um, let's see I know this video is long oh um, a little late to mention this but I'll, there'll be links in the description below to different parts um, of the video so you can skip back or forth forth forward <laughs> to the parts you need to check out um, the scatter brush I do not use, um, well, that's not true. So it has, it's kind of like clip art that you can change, you know, they've got stars, they've got smoke. Um, it's basic, it's an image brush. But this is extremely handy. Let me select everything and delete it. Um, one thing I really like using it for is, let's say I draw a shape. Let's say I'll take off the stroke and just have a fill of green I'll just draw let's just say this is a blade of grass I'm going to do a command C to copy and if I go to the scatter brush and I go to the options or uh, the types it says use clipboard what that means is whatever I've copied it's going to use that as the brush so I'll just say use clipboard and now you see when I draw it's taken that shape and it's doing a color variation. So under the scatter brush options, fill color jitter is set to 71. That's why it's changing to different colors of green. And which is really nice, but you'll notice if I do a hit G and select, there's thousands of points. So be careful if you're doing something like that, because again, you don't want a lot of points. But that scatter brush is very helpful for things like that. Let's delete. Just drawing a shape on here so we can keep um, showing you how these things are affected. These other, these last tools, I never use, or very rarely. Um, but we'll go through them real quick. Perspective points. If I grab it, it'll change the perspective of any objects I have selected. Shear, obviously shears or angles the shape um, the, I never use this bend points this is um, kind of an arc tool again never use and then noise this um, yeah I never use this as well but I'll show you what it does I'll draw a grid everything selected since I just drew it if I hold noise down and I left click and drag basically it just randomizes where your points are on your artwork. So if I pull it over, it actually will just kind of randomize the points, which is is pretty nice. If we let's do the uh, grid without the strokes, and then do noise, and then I'll hit uh, select shape, which is Q, and we'll do the same thing we did with the uh, brick that we did at the beginning, kind of. And change the color. This it's kind of neat to uh, if you want to make kind of a abstract background. Um, grab holding shift down to select multiple shapes and change the color. So that's pretty nice. But again, hardly ever use in that tool ever. So let's see. I think that's it for tools. I know it was a very long-winded video, and actually, let's just—I'm just, just going to show you some more um, techniques real quick. Um, one of the biggest questions I get asked is how to make holes 
in your shapes. Um, it's a little weird, it's a little tricky, um, but we're going to do a square shape. And what we're going to do is turn off the fill and stroke. We're just going to draw the, um, the wireframe, I should say. So, oops, let's turn off that. So we're just, we're not seeing any color at all. And if you want a window or a hole in something, you have to draw a wireframe and then draw another shape inside of it. And then we'll do a create shape, which is you, this button right here. We'll select the outer shape and then hold shift down and select the inner shape. And what that does is just punches a hole in it. Then we can create shape. And that's how you'll get a window or a hole or anything like that. It's, it's kind of strange. I wish they had a different way of doing that. But for now, that's kind of what they have, what they've always had. And um, it's a little weird because if you grab that inner shape and pull it out, it's filled. But that's just how the program works, which is, it's okay. You just have to get used to it. So now if I select this shape and do create shape again, it's going to say, oh, you want to add another shape. And we'll use blue, select the fill and turn the transparency down to make like a window and hit OK and create a shape. Now that's kind of transparent and I'll go ahead and show you. Let's draw another shape. Oh, this is really good too to show you stacking. Um, let's do, make sure it's solid. And I'll do OK and I'm going to turn the auto fill and stroke on and draw a circle. So shapes are just stacked on top of each other as you draw them. So the last shape you've drawn is always on top. So in order to change where a shape is, you need to select it. And we'll do that by hitting Q. And remember, that's the Select Shape tool. It's going to turn checkered. And then you use your arrow keys. Um, down makes it go farther down the stack. So if I tap on my arrows, it's underneath. It just is showing you where it is. But if I hit T and select, now you can see it's it's behind the green square. And since we've made this blue transparent window, you can see when I move it over that um, it's actually at the very bottom. So again, hit Q, select the shape, hit the up arrow or down arrow, and it'll change the order. So I'll put the red on top. If I select the green, and um, hit my up arrow, I can move that forward. So that's, that's how you um, change the layer stacking. Let me see if I put the red back here. The window is actually now behind the red. So I'm going to have to hit Q, select it, hit the up arrow. Now it's in front of it, and there we go. So that's a really big thing that you should know as far as um, stacking. So... That is about it for this video. Um, I hope I covered enough. This is just, again, this is just tools. Um, I would advise practicing drawing simple shapes. Again, I'll do like a hand real quick. So let's turn the fill back up. Let's select a skin color, brown, and then do a little less on the width. And Okay, hold on. All right. So, I usually almost always start off with a square. So, I'll draw a square. I'll hit A. And then, just clicking. Make some fingers, like I did before. And a thumb. The least amount of points as possible, as always. So let me, before I even add knuckles or, you know, things like that, I'll go ahead and add the basic shape. Hit C to curve. I'll curve out the fingers. Whoops. And then add points. Hit A just to, as, as I need them. Hit C to curve them out. If I want to make the thumb a little bit more curved, I'll pull this out so it looks more like a thumb. Uh, 
and move these top points. And again, you'll you'll notice that it's just a lot easier for me to um, manipulate hitting T, the fingers and stuff because there's so few points. If I had started off with adding all these other, like the knuckles, um, it just would have made it harder to get the basic shape. It's not the greatest. <laughs> Um, hit C to curve out more. Now since this is all one shape, it's the fingers are overlapping weird, so one thing you might want to do is I'll hit T. I'm just going to select these points. I should have shown you this also, the hide edge tool, which is really important. But that'll be the fill tools we'll get to in the next video. And that's part of it. So let's just delete some of these points. See, so if I want these fingers to overlap, I would just draw a new shape. So I'll hit S, draw a new square. And this is a tool that I use a lot. It's called the hide edge tool. And you'll notice when I do that, it looks like it's deleting the edge, just like up here with the delete edge tool, but it's not. It's actually just hiding that stroke. That's why it's still full, filled. So I can do that, and it gives me a little bit more control as to where I place things. If I draw another finger. And since it's another shape, you know, you can hit T and select it. Do a Command C to copy and a Command V to paste. And then just, you know, Command C, Command V. Gives you a little bit more control over where you're placing stuff. Hit T to move. And then if I want to make just a stroke, I can do A, add points. And it's not a closed shape, but I just want just the stroke or the outline. So I'm going to hit U, which is um, create shape. Click on it, and it's going to just fill in just the stroke. So if I do create shape, we get this stroke. I'll hit T and move it over so you can see it's just the stroke. I'll do a C to curve this. Then I can kind of move that into place. And then one other tool. Again, we'll get back to that with the uh, next video, but the width tool, I can actually change the width of the stroke. So the ends I can taper and get a nice hand like that. So just go ahead and practice doing shapes. Um, I think that would be the best thing to do. Uh, let me go. Let me make a window really quick again, so I can just show you how to make holes and stuff, because I think that's pretty important. So we'll go to the rectangle tool. We'll turn off the stroke and fill for now just because it'll be easier. Let's go ahead and use the grid too. It's going to make it way easier to uh, make windows. So I'll do a command G and everything snaps so we'll just draw a window. I'll go ahead and draw... That was the frame and then I'll just do actual windows. I'll hit T and hold shift down. I'll grab this other window I'll do a Command C, Command V, and since we have the grid on, it's going to snap into place like that. I'll go ahead and grab the frame, bring that down. Actually, I'll hit T, and I'll just move the points, and it'll just snap to where I want. So we get this nice, even uh, window pane. And we'll go ahead and do the uh, hole punch method we did before. So I'll do uh, Create Shape. I'll click on the frame, the outside, and it's going to fill in everything. And where I want it to punch out, I'll hold shift. And I'll just go ahead and select the sides of these windows. And let's change the fill color. We'll do a gray just so we can see it better. Hit OK. And create shape. And it's going to fill in the shape and the stroke because we have both selected. And then I can go ahead and use the uh, rectangle tool and I'll just draw a top and bottom. Let's do turn the auto fill and stroke back on so it just fills automatically. Like that. There you go. And since we're using the grid again we can um, 
make the windows really easy. Let's go ahead and change the color. Blue. We can do gradients too. That's for another tutorial, but we'll just do a light blue. Make them see through. We have auto fill and stroke on, so it's just going to fill. We can just draw over these. Make windows. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I'll go ahead and hit G and select the, this hand. And instead of using layer stacking, I'm just going to cut it. So I'll do a Command X, which cuts it to the clipboard, just like we did the grass. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll just call it hand, just so we know what it is, and drag it underneath this top layer. Double click and rename this window. And on the hand layer, I'll do a paste, Command V. Let's turn off the grid for a second. And now you can see the hands behind the window. I just wanted you to see the transparency was working. And that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Anything you thought I missed as far as the drawing tools, um, let me know. And again, I'm going to go over the other functions of the menus just because I want you guys to be really familiar with um, the drawing tools and the interface before you get started on doing any animation at all. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.